Hi, I'm Katie. I'm a professional makeup artist and I'm here with makeup tutorials to help you get really good at doing your makeup. Today's video is going to be an interesting one. I'm going to tell you all about lash curlers. I'm going to go over some different kinds and um, how to use them. So if that sounds interesting to you, just keep watching. So eyelash curlers, a very intimidating contraption for many, right? And very confusing. I know many women that don't even bother with them because they just can't figure it out or it's just intimidating. They don't want to clamp their eyes and it's what's the point and you know, all those things. Um, so the point of lash curlers is that curling the lashes, especially because most people, their lashes don't go up right? They kind of go out. If you're lucky to have a curl, you have just a slight curl. Some people, they even go down. If you curl the lashes, that really gives a wide open look to the face, to the eyes, right? And therefore the face that kind of lifts everything up. Um, so I'm going to go over a few different kinds. Um, I don't have every lash curler out there, but I got a good selection here. Um, there's hundreds, so I couldn't get every single one, but I'm gonna go over some different ones um, with you. You're gonna wanna choose what lash curler you want to use based on your eyelashes. So the um, thickness of them, the fragility of them, um, the length of them, um, and then also you're going to want to take in consideration your eye shape because eyelash curlers do come in different sizes and shapes. So it's important to take a look at that. So I'm going to put up a um, diagram for you. So if you take a look at this, I'm gonna scoot over here so I have a place to put it in the video right here for you. Um, so if you take a look at this, um, you, you'll see that it's got some different explanations of eye shapes as far as um, upturned, straight across, downturned, wide set, close set. Um, for lash curlers, what you really wanna pay attention to is um, the columns here on the bottom and on the side, right? So along the bottom here, you see um, some different shapes as far as um, round, you have almond, you have um, monolid and hooded lid, right? So I would say the difference between a hooded lid and a monolid is with a hooded lid, you can still see a little bit of this lower lid. With a mono lid, you can't, um, see any distinction between the lash line and the brow. There's, it just goes straight, right? If that makes sense, right? And it's a little bit more straight across that eye shape. Um, and then if you look along the side column here, you can see some different um, demonstrations of how deep set your eye is in comparison to your nose, right? How far back your eyes are set as far as your brow bone and your nose are concerned. So those are some things you want to take into consideration when you look for lash curlers, right? Know yourself, know your eyeballs, know your shape, know um, what you like, right? When you're going out to look for something. So different kinds of lash curlers, right? There's um, a full crimp eyelash curler like this, Right, this is a traditional one um, that you've seen many times, a classic shape. They also come in shapes for rounder eyes, um, what they call almond eyes, but it really it's the more flatter, more monolid shaped eye. So if you have a more flat curve to your top, the top of your eye, um, those are gonna be good. Um, they make them also in um, demi sizes, so small like this. You can see how small this is in comparison to this one. The idea on this one is that it's really good for shorter lashes. I like this one. My eyelashes are very short, right? And so I like this one so I, because I can really get in there because I have to get really close to my lash line in order to curl my lashes. And so this one is easier for me. You also have corner lash um, lash curlers. This is an example of one. It looks kind of like a nail clipper, right? It's pretty narrow. Um, and these, you do just little teeny sections at a time. You can use them just to do those outer corners, or you can do the whole row all the way across your eyelid with one of these. And then the last type you have is a heated eyelash curler, 
which is a little bit different and I'll get into that one there in a minute here. Um, so I tried quite a few different ones. I have a few different um, examples of ones for you. Uh, so let's start with my very favorite. Um, so out of all the ones that I tried and I have access to um, is the Kevin O'Quan lash curler. This one is my favorite. Um, it's got a good hinge on it. It's not too hard, right? So when you, it's, it opens nice and wide, so it's easy to get the lashes in there. It has a good curve to it. I don't know if you can see the curve on it, right? The, the curve of where it would fit on the eyelid. Right, it's got a good angle on the handles. It's easy to get in there and crimp. The pad is not too firm, so it has a good squeeze to it, and it's not going to make you know that L shape to the lashes. This one was my favorite of, of all the ones that I tried. Um, I know with um, other professional makeup artists, I know they really love this one. Um, there's one by Surratt Beauty that is also very popular. I don't have that one. Someday I will get to try it, but for now, this one is my favorite of all the ones that I tried. Um, next one down from that, I really liked the e.l.f. Pro Lash Curler. That one looks like this, right? So you can see on this one, the handle's a little bit different. It's got a soft grip for the squeeze. The hinge on it is a little bit different. I'm, I've been calling this a J hinge, but I don't know what it's actually called. But you can see if you look at these two side by side, how different that type of hinge is. And this one has a very strong hinge. It's got a bit of a spring here in the middle, so it has a really strong hinge. But this one, again, was wide enough. It wasn't too narrow. It was a nice width and a nice curve to it. It fit the most eye shapes. Um, you'll see from the pictures that I'm putting up as I talk about these um, that I did try them on um, my daughter and I tried them on my husband. My husband has very long, <laughs> course, lashes and hooded eyes. So I wanted you to see what this does with hooded eyes. And my daughter, of course, has very young 20 year old lashes. So there you go. I, I took pictures of them with, and you'll see one eye is not curled and one eye is curled with these. So Kevin O'Quan is the favorite. The second one is the e.l.f. Uh, Pro Eyelash Curler. That's the name of this one, the Elf Pro Eyelash Curler. And I'll list all of these down below for you so you don't have to try and remember. Uh, the next one down that I liked was the Tweezerman Classic Lash Curler. Again, very similar to the Kevin O'Quan, right? Some, same kind of hinge system here. It didn't open quite as wide as the Kevin O'Quan one here, and the pad is a little bit stiffer. Um, I also noticed that the arch of it was slightly different. If you can see that, the arch on the Kevin O'Quan is just a little different than the one on the, uh, the Tweezerman Classic, um, but this one also worked very well. Now we're going to get into the kind of um, very specific ones, right? They worked, but not necessarily for the eye shapes that I was working on. So I'm gonna talk about the Tweezerman Curl 38 degree. That is the one for almond shaped eyes. You can see it has a picture here. Now when they say almond, they mean that flat top arch type of almond shape, right? So this one you'll see is wider here the arch is not as deep here. It also has the type of that J type of hinge as well. Um, and you can see when it's positioned up against the eye. So if you compare it to the Kevin O'Quan, look at this bottom handle here, right? And the, if I have it lined up on the eye here, this is where the handle is positioned. Whereas this one, it's positioned just a little more straight up and down if that makes sense, right? So it's it's ergonomically designed and shaped more for the type of eye shape that is a little wider and a little flatter of an arch, not as round of an arch, excuse me, on the top lid, if that makes sense. 
Then the next one is going to be the Tweezerman Curl 60 Degrees. That's this one. You can see there's a picture for round eyes. That's what the description is on this one. And then this one is going to, the hinge type is going to be much more similar to a classic one. Um, but the curve on it is much more dramatic here. So if you have round eyes, so if that upper lid is very round, then this is going to be the, the um, shape of eyelash curler that you want. Now, neither my husband nor my daughter had um, round eyes. So this one didn't work as well on them. This one on my husband, even though his eyes are not as almond shaped as in this picture, um, he, um, because he has hooded eyes, this almond shaped one actually worked very well for him. Um, it was really able to get corner to corner. So that one worked really well um, on him. So for hooded eyes, you may want to think about looking at um, a lot of people with hooded eyes, their eye shape is not as round. So um, think about looking at something that's meant for almond shaped eyes, a lash curler. That makes sense. Okay, so all the classically shaped ones, those are all of the classically shaped ones. Okay, so now I'm going to show you um, some of the um, other ones that I liked. And again, these are for more specific um, use cases. Um, so another one that I like to use professionally on other people is the Tweezerman Every Lash is what it's called. That's the corner lash one. Um, there's a lot of different versions of these around, right? Um, but you can see it's very, very narrow. There, it's only about a half an inch. Well, let's see, I measured it. Let's see, what did I measure it as? It is five sixteenths of an inch wide. So it's very, very narrow, right? And it, you can really get in to those corner lashes and crimp them. Um, this one works, it works really well when I use it on other people as well, especially um, when I just want to get those outer corners or when I want to just kind of marry some false lashes with their natural lashes. Something this size works very well for that case. Um, again, like I said earlier, the Sonia Kashuk Demi, which is this one, um, that one is my personal favorite. I like to use this one on myself. I found that on my husband and my daughter, it was more difficult to use, right? With, the, with their longer lashes, it was more difficult to use this smaller one. These little bars here got in the way. It just kind of tweaked the lashes next to it, where on me, it doesn't do that, right? Because my lashes are so short. So I really liked this Demi size one. And this one is half an inch wide. Now on to a couple of kind of gimmicky ones that I just had to try because I saw them and I didn't really like either one of them. So the first one I'm going to talk about is by Japanesque. They call it the Extreme Eyelash Curler Dramatic Deep Curl. It looks from the side like a fairly normal J hinged eyelash curler, right? But look at that arch that it has in the middle. You see that curve? That curve goes in a U shape, not just this way. It also curves this way. This was really hard to use. It did really bizarre things to eyelashes. It just, you couldn't get in there to get them all. It, it was weird. It, it, it didn't work. I don't recommend this one. And then the last one that I have of this type of curler, this is by J Cat Beauty. And this is the Curl and Lift Up Eyelash Comb Curler. So if you look at that, that has combs. It has teeth on the front of it. Now, the combing part was kind of cool as far as guiding the lashes up. So the idea isn't necessarily bad, but um, I found that it was very hard to get it 
um, at a point to the lashes where um, it didn't squeeze the eyelid. Because of the position, if you look at this pad here and where this black, the metal part sits on the pad, it's sitting too far this side of towards the comb, it's sitting too far this side. And this is the side where the lid is. And so you have to be farther away from the lid in order to squeeze it without squeezing your eyelid. Um, so you're getting that L shape anyway in your lashes because you can't get close enough. So it's mostly on this one, it's mostly the positioning of the crimper on the pad that's causing the problem with this one. Otherwise the comb thing is kind of cool, but it just, it just didn't work. And then the last curler that I mentioned is a heated eyelash curler. Now heated eyelash curlers are different than um, the traditional clamp ones that I just showed you. The um, heated ones are, you don't clamp and you use them after mascara, whereas the clamp kind you use before mascara. So I want to show you, this is a heated eyelash curler, and I want to show you this in action um, on my daughter. So I'm going to grab my daughter and I'll be right back. So this is Deanne. She's going to help me demonstrate because I have no lashes and she has nice long lashes. So you'll actually be able to see this. So what I'm going to do is she has no mascara on right now. I am going to demonstrate how to use a regular lash curler. This is the Tweezerman uh, Classic. Classic arch, classic width, it's pretty uh, basic. Um, and then on the other, and then we'll put some mascara on and then I will show you how to use the heated eyelash curler. So let's zoom in here on Deanne. Nice and tight. All right, so look down for me. There we go. So you want to make sure that you position the curler so that the top part here is on the lid, but not pressed into the lid. Because when you squeeze, if you press it on, you're gonna catch your eyelid with the pad, right? So you don't want to press it too hard into the lid. You want to place it at the base of the lashes, get a nice light crimp, tilt a little bit, so you're into your socket, and then squeeze. Little pumping motions. Just a few. All right, and then we're gonna move it out a little bit further. Same thing, squeeze. Don't squeeze super tight. Don't use this kind of lash curler with mascara on. It will stick to the curler and you have more chance of ripping your eyelashes out. That does not sound fun, right? And then the last one, we're going to go to the very tips of the lashes and make sure that we get the lashes. Right? So, Deanne, I want you to try this yourself, right? Okay. Okay? So here's mirror. Oh, jeez. So you can look into the mirror. Oh, jeez. Okay. Right? Hold on just a second. Let me angle the camera. Let me take you out a little bit wider. Okay. So look into the mirror. Oh, You're going to position the top part on your lid, right? Make sure your lashes are in between. Yeah. Squeeze lightly together so you don't lose your lashes. Right? Exactly. Just like that. Now tilt it up a little bit. Yes. Now squeeze. Don't be afraid. Very good. Just like that. All right? So that's how you're going to do it on yourself. Ta-da! <laughs> All right. So let's get some mascara on so that you can see what that looks like. Got her mascara here. So when I'm putting mascara on somebody else, this is a good tip for um, budding makeup artists out there, is I'm gonna have my client look down as far as they can without closing their eyes, right? I don't want them to close their eyes because then I have to pull their eye apart to, um, to get to their lashes, right? You wanna be able to, to get in there. So I'm gonna have her look down as far as she can. Think happy thoughts. You're in your happy place. And I'm gonna hold the lid with my thumb. You can see I'm holding the upper lid so that it doesn't blink too much. If you have a blinker, you just give them a chance to blink. It's okay, it's fine. Start at the base, wiggle up and out. Start at the base, wiggle up and out. All right, 
So there we have with mascara and curled, and we're going to put mascara on the other side so that you can see better how those lashes are positioned when they're not curled. Okay, so this again. So base of the lashes, wiggle up and out. Get all the way over to the inner corner. And it's not any, any mascara on the bottom at all yet, so that's just to the top. So I'm gonna zoom you in just a little bit again here so you can see in a little bit closer. And you can see the difference between the two sides. This side's curled, this side's not. Just look straight at the camera. There you go. So now we're going to do the heated, right? So this one, this is pretty cool. So these newer um, heated lash curlers, they're rechargeable, so you don't have to do batteries, and they have a temperature reading on them, which is pretty neat. Um, so we're going to set it this. This one has 65, 75, 85, 95. Um, so it has those settings. We're going to set it at 75 for this instance. If you have very um, fine lashes, if you have um, weak lashes, if you're, you know, you're worried very fragile lashes, then I would go with the lowest setting. If you have more thick, coarse hair, then you can go up towards the highest. But right around the middle, 75, 85 is probably right where you want to be with one of these. It only takes a few minutes to heat up, right? So it's got a little coil in the center here. Um, that heats up and then the plastic coating around the outside. So that heated coil will never touch your skin. So you can see I'm touching this with my finger and I can feel the heat, but I'm not going to burn myself, right? And you can see it has a slight curve to it and it's flexible. So a heated lash curler you want to use with mascara on. So the point of a heated lash curler is it's going to warm up the mascara and the lash and help with the mascara, it will help bond that curl into the lashes, much like you would use a prep spray on your hair before curling it. So look down again for me. We're going to just kind of comb through and hold it, just like that, for oh, five seconds or so. And you just keep going until you get the curl that you want. Do you want to try that? Shoot. <laughs> there you go. Don't be afraid, you're not going to burn yourself. And hold it in place. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> but look at what it did to the lashes. So look at the camera and you can see the difference there on how much that curled those lashes. If you want it to last even longer, use a waterproof mascara, a waterproof mascara because of the polymers and things in there that make it waterproof. It's going to um, harden more and kind of, you know, be more resistant to softening in the lashes falling. So it will hold, lock in place that, that curl for you. Right. Thanks, Deanne. So, thank you, Deanne, for helping me. It's nice to have somebody here at home that I can demonstrate on since I can't bring models in right now. Um, so I wanted to also show you the heated eyelash curler on myself, someone with very, very short eyelashes. So I've cleaned this off after using it on her. I've got it at 75 degrees. I don't want to go any higher than that for me. My eyelashes are fairly um, fragile, right? They're short, they're, I'm aging, so all my hair is thinning everywhere, lovely, um, right? So I want to put it at the base of the lashes and just hold them in a curl. My lashes already have mascara on them. Now, as I mentioned, a heated eyelash curler you want to use after mascara. I know you're going to hear me repeat this. Do not use a clamping, mas a clamping eyelash curler on mascara eyelashes. 
you have run a great risk of your eyelashes sticking to the curler and ripping out. You don't want that to happen. So you always want to use it before you put mascara on, right? So this is the heated one. So on myself, I like this heated eyelash curler and I like that little tiny Demi curler. Those are the ones that I like on myself. So others like me that have nice short eyelashes, there you go, you can see a difference between the curled side and the not curled side. So it actually does a really good job and makes my lashes more noticeable. Um, I just did a tight line liner today so that you could really see my lashes, what you can of them. Um, so there's curled and not curled with the heated lash curler. Um, I will link for you down below where I found all of these. Um, there's a lot more um, heated eyelash curlers than I thought out there. You know, this is very different than the kind that I had back in the 90s. Um, it, that was battery operated. It didn't heat up evenly. It didn't really do anything. It would, they were weird. Um, but these are actually very good. I'm pretty impressed with the current ones that are available. It's pretty, pretty good. So that is all about lash curlers. I hope that that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and ask. Um, I'm happy to help you. Um, if you have a favorite eyelash curler that you just love, please tell me and I would love to know and I'd love to try some different ones that are out there and I'd love to know what people like and why they like them. So I hope that you have a great day and thank you so much for watching.